run through kind of quickly like what what I did in the program across the hall, just because I feel like I came into this like having no idea really what I was getting myself into, and just so you can kind of see like the transition of how you get from, from A to Z. Um, so uh, this is what I made like a month before I came into school here. I called it the Joy Monster mascot, and I was kind of reacting to. Uh, People that hold, like homeless people that say like they'll work with beer and things like that. Like I, I wanted to just be like a positive thing on the side of the road, so I would just wear this around town and like dance and wave. And it was I liked that it didn't seem to have a specific demographic. Like it seemed to affect a range of people. Uh, but so this is what I did like literally like two months before I came up here. So my head was at um, celebrating people and um, using silliness as a starting point to spread good cheer and connecting people together. Those were sort of some of the things that I was thinking about. I take silliness very seriously. <laughs> um, uh, so my first project here, it's funny because I think I came into this program expecting to make like really like fashion, but I like didn't go that way at all. And I don't know <laughs> when that shifted. But my first project, I decorated the, a red line train at the beginning of the red line and I rode it all the way down and I would like, give people party hats and um, kind of celebrate the people that came on the train. So we like covered it with balloons, and um, everything we put on, we took it off at the end because I didn't want it to be destructive. Uh, so it was that was just performance. There wasn't really any wearable elements to that one. Um, and then this was also my first semester. I made a hat for a bench, and then I also put like cushions in it so that people could lean against the bench and be comfortable. So I made two: one to explore how to wear, and one for people to engage with. And I left it out there. It was probably out there for two months or so. And then, so, I think this is really important. I think this is a huge thing that I picked up in grad school is that you don't have to leave old concepts as like ghosts in your past. Like, I, I think it's okay to rework a concept until you're done with it. Like, as long as you're still finding interesting things that you can keep exploring, like, it's always, it's all a sketch until you're done with it. And so I was still, like, I still had this Joy Monster character on my mind, and so I made these like little trophies from it, and then I turned the trophy work into a fabric print digitally, and then I made that into a blouse. So I always think that's a huge thing. Is like how do you, how many different ways can you push your work? How many different products can you pull out of this like one train of thought? And so like from this one character that I made, I was like pulling out all these different directions. <laughs> I put this in here because this was a, a total train wreck. <laughs> Um, and I think they're, I think those are so important. Like in order to get from A to C, you have to make B. Like I'd say maybe like 80% of the things I make are like mediocre, but it's important to make the mediocre work so I can get to the great work. And this was like I had these magnet scenes in the back, and I was thinking about connecting people together so these would like open up and it would be one garment that two people could wear. But it like it didn't work the way I planned, and the magnets were so strong I was sticking to cars and things. Like it was really, I mean, so we really did ice skating and stuff, and it was a good first step, but it wasn't, it didn't work the way I wanted it to. But it was still like, I'm, it was still really important that I made it. Um, so then I'm still, this is still in the, no, this, is, this was my second semester, and I'm still thinking about connecting people together. So I made this garment that, if you see the girl standing there, it just looks like this big sculptural garment, but it had these pockets, and you could pull these pieces out that I, did, I really kind of constructed it organically. I cut these pattern pieces out of silly shapes and just let the, the garment kind of evolve. And then I tried to see how many people I could get into this garment. So I got up to a five in it, but I also explored one person in it and two people in it. But it was just going on this idea of connecting people together and working with silliness to spread good cheer. So the whole time that I'm doing this other stuff, I'm always kind of exploring materials on the side and just, you know, anything. Like I could be playing with my sisters and I might be like playing with this foam or something that's in their toy and I'm thinking like what what can I do with this foam? Like what are there what are other ways that I can take this? Um, so I, I was really interested in Velcro and I was exploring it because it was a material that connects. So I was trying to connect people together and then I was like, well, what if I work with this material that physically connects? So I started to build these um, little shapes that ended up working like Legos around the body in a space. And I worked on this um, just around the body and then before I started to move it into the installation that you saw, like in, into a space. Um, but something to, to keep in mind here is that I try to collaborate with as many people as I can. In fact, when you guys were all talking about your 
different backgrounds. I was thinking like if you all did a presentation together, it would be so interesting because you had such varied um, skills and things that you had done. You know, like what if an architecture and a, and a fine artist did a presentation together? Uh, but so I'm always just you know calling people and, and meeting people in different classes and finding ways that we can work together because it, it really amazing things ends up coming from that. And the reverse is when people ask me like, hey, can you do this performance? I'm like, yeah, because I'm usually like, can you wear some Velcro in a library with me? You know, so it, it kind of goes back and forth. Um, and this I did over the summer in between uh, the, my years here, but uh, I was working with this idea of these glasses that connect people together. So they're like these sculptures, but then when you wear them with somebody else, it, it really it changed how we would navigate a space. And something that was really unexpected, and that happens a lot with, with anything that I make. Like, I have this idea of how it's going to go, but you never really know until it's actually a product. And um, something that I wasn't expecting is how, how intimate it was. Like, I don't really get this close to someone's face other than, like, my fiancé. And it was really, this was just a, a, a colleague of mine in Ohio, and we were working together, and we were, like, really close to each other's faces, and sort of having to really um, navigate the space in unusual ways. So. But just again, building on this idea of, of connecting people together and working together. Uh, so this is, uh, all that work was from my first year here. But the whole time that I'm doing all this work, I do a lot of work with myself. Like I feel like what I wear really engages people like on a daily level with just about anybody that I interact with. And so this, for, for about 10 years coming into grad school, I would, I wore what I would call like extreme wear, and it was just kind of like a collage of costumes and fashion and I don't know, you know objects. There's paper right there. Um, so coming in, I wanted to change that up. In my first semester, I just focused in on um, outfits that had to do with celebrating people because that was kind of the concept that I was working with coming in. And then my second semester, I wanted to really turn that on its head and kind of challenge, not do the same thing that I had done for 10 years. And so I really narrowed the parameters and I just wore paper for an entire semester. So I explored like cardboard, sandpaper, newspaper, just any kind of paper I could get my hands on. And I did this every day for a semester and it was very interesting. It, it, I, it was interesting that I thought that, um, like I, I wore gray originally underneath because I thought that my colorful clothing would compete with wearing paper. but really can't compete with wearing paper because it's you're wearing paper. And so people would always ask me, um, what are you supposed to be? And I was like, I don't know, what are you supposed to be? You know, but um, so at the end of the semester I put on as many as I could get on and took a walk down Michigan Avenue because I just was really intrigued by how powerfully it seemed to impact people, even though it was just paper. You know, like you there's a lot of pressure in the fashion industry to make things that are really lavish and kind of expensive materials, whereas this was just, a lot of it was newspaper and just discarded paper, but it really, like, people would stop in their tracks and want to talk to me about it, a range of people, not just, not, a, not any specific demographic. So, I was still interested in this. I, I had, like, set a time, like, I was going to do this this semester and then it was going to be over, but when the semester finished, I wasn't done with the idea. So I just kept exploring it. So it had been a, a real solo project for me. So I put a whole community in the paper outfits that were still together. And then we kind of explored pulling it apart and going back together. And I took pieces and I made these a lot of, I took it back from 3 into 2D because I like going between these transitions. The Velcro does that too. The Velcro can be flat and it can go into 3D. Uh, but so I stamped them. I don't, you can't really see, but I stamped them all to say that they were worn by me um, during that time. I fall or the spring, um, with the idea that like if I ever brought them back into 3D and wore them again, then I could stamp them again, and they would sort of accumulate these performative experiences. Um, but I was still kind of interested in, in bringing other people into the paper, so I laid them all out like a carpet on State Street and just let people walk on them for about an hour or so, and it was interesting to kind of watch some people wanted to jump over it and some people wanted to walk on it. But So then I stamped them all again, and I said that they were walked on by people on State Street. But I still wasn't done with the paper idea, so I started to wear Tyvek, which is like a paper fabric hybrid. Because it seemed like every time I narrowed the parameters, like more came from it. Like originally just kind of wearing crazy things every day, like it was too, it wasn't focused enough. But by focusing it in, I was finding like more of a direction. 
Um, so with this, instead of making a new composition every day that would fall apart, I worked on one. Like I, I extended a conversation the entire semester, so I added or subtracted to this one outfit every day for the whole term. And, and with Tyvek, I could add zippers and snaps and stuff because it was more sturdy. The other stuff, it would like I'd be walking down the street and it would blow right off, it would rip right off, and I'd like pull a stapler out of my purse and put back on. And so like, you, I really couldn't fall in love with the composition in the morning because it would be completely different at the end of the day, and it would get rained on and whatever. And then my final semester, I think because it was winter time and like with a coat on, you can't even really see what you're wearing, and also the face is where people meet you. So I really wanted to just kind of explore with taking women's makeup. So it's not face paint, it's just eyeshadow but I took it out of the zones of the eyes and the cheeks and just kind of played with it. And so when everybody was asking me, when I would wear paper, what are you supposed to be? With the, with the makeup, people always asked me what I was celebrating, which I thought was kind of interesting. That, that really wasn't what I intended going into it, but that's what I came across. But I don't know if you guys ever heard Coco Chanel, um, her quote was, I think she would look in the mirror and take one thing off so that she wouldn't over accessorize. And that's how she would know that she was ready because for me, like, I look in the mirror and if I laugh out loud a little bit, that's when I know that I'm ready. Because then people are probably going to laugh at me and engage with me. So it's just like a moment that I can connect with them and exchange, like a, like a silly moment and, and kind of spread the cheer. But so, like, right now, I'm kind of exploring with how to bring things to the body in a way that they're not normally worn. Or maybe even things that, like, I'm trying to figure out ways to wear, like, a lamp and stuff. Like, I'm trying to bring things. And so that's sort of my project that I'm doing right now is um, that along this line. So. Um, so the whole time that I'm doing making these, I'm always working on five or six things at once, and some of them get to like levels that are exhibition ready, and some of them just kind of stay in sketch area, and it kind of goes back and forth, and it's nice because, you know, when I'm kind of in a, I can't figure something out, I can kind of work in this other direction, and it, it, comes, it comes in handy. But, so while I was making these things, I was also working on this idea of of a ritual and what happens when you bring silliness into a ritual or bring a community into a ritual. And so I explored brushing my teeth in 25 silly ways in a video and um, I brought other people into brushing your teeth into a video. And I all of this stuff, if you ever want to look me up on YouTube, there's video examples of just about everything that I do. Because I, I actually use video as a form of sketching instead of like pen and paper. I, I work out ideas or choreography or how it looks in a space. Um, and I was also just doing a lot of work with smiling, and I was doing like smiling workouts and trying to see how long I could hold it. I think the longest I got to was two minutes and 50 seconds. But what was weird is like, no matter how much it hurt, it still looked like I was happy. And it was still like, in, in smiling is like yawning, like people smile back at you. It's very, I even had a child that I tried it with and he just naturally smiled back. But it, to me it was like almost physically painful, but it was still sharing joy. And so I did a lot where I was, sending out videos of just me smiling and asking people to record themselves watching it and going back and forth and just kind of connecting with people on a, on a performance level. And so this was the beginning of my last year in grad school and um, so I've been working again with this idea of materials that connected together. So I had some plexiglass and some foam cut with these slits and the idea is that they were interlocked and they could build up in a space or around the body. and. Um, we were encouraged to take this project out of the studio and out of the gallery and into a space. We call it the destination project. So I did this at the um, the Union Station, the train station. And then again, I'm still going on with this idea of connecting people together and putting multiple people into one garment. And so I wanted to make one choir robe that I put the whole choir inside. And so I, this was at the public library down that way. And I had four women, um, they were fantastic. I had a really hard time finding people. Like I put out an ad saying I was looking for a non-traditional choir. <laughs> and uh, these women, I said that I was looking, that I wanted to use silliness to spread good cheer. And these women were like, oh my gosh, please let, work with us. And I was like, yes, let's do it. And uh, so they started off like as a sculpture and then they slowly kind of emerged and did choreography and movement. They did two songs. Um, it was really interesting. I, I think for me, I got a lot out of it visually. I really, if you can see like this shape and the color here, like even though like I loved the performance experience, um, what I, I ended up doing these 2D drawings. So I took the images and I flattened them and made them into vectors. And it was interesting because a lot of people said that the 
choir robes looked like flags to them and not like choir robes. And then when I did these, people said that they looked like countries. And I just thought that was interesting because I'm always kind of working with, with the idea of people. Um, and so I ended up using these to make vinyl prints that I put on the window case, the sage case down there. Uh, I cut them up and made them, people could go up and, and change them around. But this is just another example, like how many ways can you pull your work in different directions, you know, that you don't just have to leave your, you know, make an idea and leave it behind you, you know, so what does this choir robe look like in 2D, and what does it look like as a vinyl window print, you know, so. Um, and this was, I took a paper outfit that particularly made people laugh a lot the day that I wore it, and so I made it out of wood, and I just wanted to see, you know, what it did in, in, in a really substantial, heavy material instead of this kind of flimsy material, and I just kind of ran around Chicago for the day wearing this wooden object, so. But this, this shape, I, I ended up calling it the squid shape, and it, it reappears in my work a lot. So, so this was the sage uh, window, this was this last semester, last spring semester. Um, so all that time that I had been making Velcro, and I sent the Velcro company um, my portfolio of all my work, and um, I said that I just would really love the opportunity to, to work with them in some way, and they uh, sponsored the window with materials, like if you can see these, like that blue shape in the background and the red shape, um, that's a material called Veltex that Velcro owns, and they, um, so I was able to make those shapes um, with their help, and also a lot of the shapes that I'm wearing there. But so this, um, this experience was 12 days long, and I got 12 different performers to, um, it was almost like a lab. Like I, I allowed the, before this I had really asked performers to, I had some kind of an end game with them. I would kind of coach them and I, I had a direction that I wanted to take them. Whereas this, I really wanted to just let the performers go. Like I let the work go and I put it in their hands and I wanted to see what would happen if I, when other great creative people interacted with it. Uh, so I did the first performance and the last performance because I wanted to see if watching other people engage with my work changed my thinking at all. So the one, this one was the first performance and um, I engaged people with the window things and then they put the, the Velcro on me and then I took a walk down State Street. Uh, and the title was also in flux. The, the different performers would change the title for whatever they were working on that day. And, um, it was interesting because almost everybody used transformation except for one person. That, that was kind of unexpected. This is what it looked like on the inside. This was uh, day one. And then day two, that's uh, Sandra Adams. She teaches fashion history here. And she came in wearing black. She wanted to react to the color in the space. So she came in wearing black. And then she made these color study paintings based on objects in the space. And then she actually changed her clothes while in the case and left wearing color. Uh, this was Michelle's family, uh, Dexter. I just everybody kept saying that my work was very childlike, and I just wanted to see what would happen if you put a child in the space. And it was interesting how it went from art space to play space in like seconds. And uh, I would leave it, I would leave the window, however the performers left it that day, and I would change it at night. And I, a tour came by right after this, and they were like, "Oh, it was really organized yesterday." Because it was like a, a child had like come in. <laughs> Uh, this was, uh, the artist's name is Chen Chen, he worked with sound, so he put microphones in the space and he would really magnify the sound of the Velcro ripping or the plexi pieces interlocking. And it was really great because then you started to pay attention to other sounds like the elevators and phones ringing because he was bringing it to your attention. Um, this was Jake Bogues and he does this thing called Trend Camp. And so he decided to make the case his camp and he made a tent out of the Veltex and then the, literally the space like annihilated the tent, so the camp actually destroyed his setup. It was really interesting. And he, uh, it was about celebrity, he did a lot of singing and engaging with the, the audience watching. This was Bowtie, he's a grad student here, and he actually put the audience in the case, and then he talked to us from the outside, <laughs> engaging with us on ideas of what is the role of performer and audience, and he talked to the entire uh, this is uh, Marissa, She's, uh, uh, she'll be a second year this fall, a grad student, and she, went, she does a lot of work with connecting people also, so she brought her sisters in, and they were all tied together, and they tried to color coordinate the space, which was quite hard, because it's very, it's very colorful. Uh, 
Um, this was Yu Ting. She is a sound student at, at SASC. Actually, I think she graduated. But she asked people to come in and tell her a secret. And when they told her a secret, they were supposed to cover her with an object in the space. And I really didn't expect a lot of people to go in there because, like, you know, how do you know she's going to keep your secret? You don't really know that. But a lot of people did, and she ended up being completely covered. And it was kind of interesting because it was a little bit of a darker side to my work that I'd never seen before. And it was kind of interesting to see it go that direction. I felt like. Um, this is Sky. Uh, do you guys know Sky? Come, come. She's a student here. She wears like chainmail and well. But so her and her boyfriend do a lot of circus work and juggling, and so they came in and kind of turned the space into a stage and did a lot of their circus acts. This is Charles Rice, and he wanted to play with the lighting of the space, and he completely he made it dark and added different colors of lights, and it really kind of changed the whole mood of everything. This was a photographer that I went to undergrad with, and she with the pieces. She would kind of set up mini installations and shoot them with antique Polaroids and then organize the Polaroids amongst the space. And then her dress was made out of this like knit and she would get completely caught up and tangled into the velcro. So she kind of became a sculpture of herself. And then this was, oops, sorry, this was the last day. So that was my second performance. And I brought the plexiglass out of the case and built it up around the body. And I put a cake and other kinds of food in the case to invite people to go in. Because it was just, it was really different inside. Like it was a window, but you really, you didn't feel like it was a window. You felt like you were kind of immersed. And I just wanted to give people the opportunity to, to feel what it was like to be in there. So people, I don't know if you can see there's somebody in there eating while we're um, building on the outside. And this is, so every day it's set up completely differently. We would come in at night and change it up for whatever the performers needed it to be the next day. So these are just kind of this. It's hard to tell because of the angle of the window, but these are some of the different setups that it looked like over the 12 days. Um, and this is, this is just another one of those examples of a byproduct is that I uh, worked with a lot of amazing photographers, because that's like a huge part of my work is documenting it, really working with people to document it well. And uh, this was Grace Duval, she's also an MDS student. And I, I feel like this looks like a painting. So it's just really interesting that I didn't expect that. This was just another direction that the work can go. It's like, well, how does it go from 2D to 3D, 2D to 3D? Um, this is just what the plexiglass looks like. Um, so you know, he, there it was in an installation, and there it was around the body, and now this is what it looks like as a sculpture. So I really like to see like all the different ways that the work can take shape. And here's also the Velcro, more like a painting. So I just stretched Veltex onto a canvas, and you can arrange it. So, you know, how does it become an art object? How does it come to the body? How does it go into a space? Um, and then, right after the window, Jake Bogues, who did the camp, the tent um, performance, he um, does a lot of work with fashion photography, and he had been asking me for a while if we could do a shoot that made the Velcro more of like a fashion piece and less of an art object. And so this was a, a collaborative piece that we did together that I thought looked really cool. Because so, like I said, I try to work with as many what it brings to work. This is another one of these shots. Uh, this is Grace Duval, though, who took that picture before. We were doing uh, some work on just making hats that two people had to wear and like how they move, and we just worked with creating images for it. Uh, this was just before the thesis installation. This was kind of a dry run. I did it at the Cincinnati Art Museum, and I just uh, invited the community to kind of build the Velcro up around me it was really important to do a trial run because I was gonna, I was gonna let people kind of engage with it without me there. Like I was gonna let people just go in and take it apart during the run of the show. But I found out during this project that it needs to be, it needs to be choreographed. It needs to be people who know how to work with the materials because they can. It's really easy to destroy them if you don't know what you're doing. And so um, that's huge advice I can give to you. It's like always test out your stuff. You know, don't just go into it dry. You know, rehearse practice. So this is the um, thesis installation and it had two performances in two different openings and I, I hired performers who had, I hired people who had worked with the work the most so that they, I knew that they could really, and we did a, we did a couple rehearsals, but I knew that they really could handle the work and that it could be more composed and kind of bring order to the chaos. Um, so it changed a few times. 
So that's them. Those are the three performers. And uh, I had them wear white because I, I felt like since the, the space was so colorful, I wanted them to try to. That's always something I have to think about is when you're working with performers. It's like, what do they wear? You know, what do, it's, it's interesting, like the little details you have to think through. But they have white pantyhose on the outside of their pants because the Velcro sticks to the pantyhose. Um, and there was a couple of different levels to the performance, like at one point Sky would she put on a Velcro suit and they could build up on her. So there's we wanted to make sure that we could build and there was surprise in the performance. And this was at the opening, like people just I, I thought it became like a happening or something from the 60s, like people just kind of jumped in. It was really interesting. And then this, I just threw this in. This was during the week of the thesis exhibition. There was um, Rapid Pulse Chicago, which is a performance festival, and then there was the Gorilla Truck Show, which is a design festival. And I was uh, really honored to be invited to be in both. And at the time, I was like, what am I going to do? Because my best work is in this exhibition right now. And so this was an opportunity to kind of pull out all those other things that I've been working on on the side and explore them in this arena. And so I ended up collaborating with Jake Bogues again. And we did um, this truck show and the Rapid Pulse. And we, they were kind of a series of chapters um, that we worked, we combined our work together. And because um, they were all, they were four hour long so that like that whole week we were working together either for here or for these two festivals. Um, but so this was just an example of like I can bring stuff to different places. Um, and this was, so this is still kind of a sketch place, but it was I was able to, to perform it because I had been working on it on the side. Whereas the stage show was much, was a much more refined place. But it, it's nice to have you know different directions at once. So that's it. So that's kind of I don't know if you guys have any questions or. <laughs> to see how you get from like A to, to the end. <laughs> Stressful for me because I don't really do. I do work 
where people are because my work is about people. Um, and so that's why, I guess what Aka was saying about installation, I really tried to find a way to try to, my goal for that was to really change the space in some way. That's why I did, I did the floor print and I changed the walls and I hung things on the ceiling. And I think it was a good starting point, but I think in the future I really want to, I want to change the square somehow. Um, but so I had to find a way to make the gallery experience interesting for me because that was really tough because I just wanted to be there with the people all the time and like, engaging with them. But um, I mean, it's, it's good to step out of your, it's weird that my comfort zone is, I'm an artist, but my comfort zone is not the gallery. You know, I had to, like going into the gallery and stepping out of my comfort zone. That's not weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I mean, I'm glad, I, I feel like I, I learned a lot. And, and the show that I have coming up in October is also in a white wall gallery, so I'm like, oh, here we go again. But, <laughs> so. Yeah, so I do, I mean, we had performances in the stage and in the window, and I'll probably have a couple in October. So I was actually, I really love this art, um, art hotel in Louisville, Kentucky. It's called 21C, and they, um, you know, we had to go to Art Basel for two years. Uh, I went with Anka, actually. Um, and I went to 21C like a couple weeks before Art Basel, and it was the same, I saw the same work. So it was, it's a hotel that has an art gallery that's work that's like happening right now. And what I love about this hotel is it's 24 hours, it's a hotel lobby. So you can just, like, hey, I want to go hang out with contemporary art at 3 in the morning. But they do like yoga in the gallery, like they really try to kind of bridge this gap between how you experience work and on what level you experience the work. So I think when I think about the gallery, I try to think about that. Like, how do I, you know, maybe I should just put my work in the bathroom of the gallery. You know, like, where, how can I engage with it so that it's still interesting to me, but it's still in the gallery again, so. Did that answer your question? Okay. <laughs>
it's always a sketch until you're not interested in it anymore. And um, so uh, until I'm done finding things to explore with the Velcro, I'm going to kind of keep working through it. But I had been making a lot of stuffed shapes, and now I'm working with making really stiff shapes out of foam. Um, it still has to be light for it to fit on a body and not collapse, but they're really tall and they're very architectural. And I really, I'm hoping, we'll see how much I can produce by October, but I'm hoping to kind of make it a much more immersive environment and that there's actually like a structure. Because um, like I said, I really want to try to change this white cube a little bit, so we'll see. But that's kind of, so I'm still working with this, the Velcro, but I'm still bringing something into it that I want to explore. And then the, the wedding, I'll go right back into fashion. So we'll see, like all of these things that I've been making, like how does that translate into a wedding dress? So, um, you know, so, that? yeah. <laughs> so, so there, you know, there it goes back into wearable. So it's so it's back and forth. And I was actually thinking, if I'm going to take the time to to build up concepts for one outfit, that I was actually thinking about making like a five piece collection or something, because if I'm already putting in the work, I might as well. And then maybe there's a contest or something I can submit for. You know, there's how many different ways to go at stuff. It's it's great.
Now what we all get, loaded with, we have to peel it off before you even actually get to your core. And I always um, saw it with you, it was, um, it was pretty early, I mean really right there, there was already that core. There wasn't so much um, other stuff, you know, to be peeled off. It was more about finding that focus or yeah. finding that kind of mission to be more clear in the way what you actually want to do with this kind of freedom you already have access to. Mm -hmm. And I think with um, a lot of us, it's we have to first find this freedom, mm -hmm. you know, and then, but you already have that. So this is, I was always so impressed by that. That's um, that's a very um, unusual. I think it's like very unusual, and it's really something I think what we all um, can learn from. This kind of to finding this access, direct access to um, to your core, and what is that core actually? So. Yeah, I definitely had to find like order in the chaos. Like I, in fact, Nathan the out sat me down pretty early on, and they were like, "We know that you want to do everything, but you can't do everything in one project. You know, like so, just start making a list and start checking because I was trying to put way too much into everything, and I had to really, like she said, I had to focus <laughs> and kind of pull out that excess that I didn't need stream, stream to the content." Thanks for, thanks for having me. Um, good luck on all your projects. Thank you. Thank you. Right? Thank you.